Welcome to Wine Decoded. We're having a bit of an impromptu Burgundy tasting. I had the Stefan Magnens open under the trusty Coravin. Uh, having a look at the latest release, the 2015s, and there was so much going on in these wines, I thought it was worth sharing that with you guys. There's a few different areas that we're going to look at today. We're going to look at the differences between the villages or the communes. So we've got Maurice saint -Denis. we've got Chambon Musigny here and here, and we've got a Gervais Charmatan here with the Cham Charmatan. We've also got a spread of producers with two Chambons, one from Stephen Magnan, one from Benjamin LaRue. We've got two vintages of the same wine from Stephen Magnan, his Les Sentiers, which is fast becoming one of perhaps if not my favourite wine from him, and we're going to talk about all of that. So, in a nutshell, what's going on? Let's first talk about the different villages and what's happening. Moray Saint Denis, it's the one in the middle of all of these, Gervais Chambertin being the most northerly of the three, uh, and they're all next to each other, and Chambon Mizigny being the most southern of the three. The Moray Saint Denis tend to be, and this is exactly the case with the Stephen Magnan, um, quite vibrant in red fruits, uh, quite fresh, and have tannins that are, are perhaps not as long as the Chambons or not as broad as the Gevres. And we see that in here. Lovely, crunchy, fresh raspberry, rhubarb kind of fruit. Um, Great clarity to this wine and great togetherness uh, of for for this wine. What's interesting is when you step up and you have this ability to compare and contrast and you go to a Chambon Musigny after having a Moray saint immediately the nose, very, very different. And great doing this across the same producer and then different producers. The nose of the Chambon Musigny has a perfume. It has these kind of flowers and there's an elegance to it. The 15s are showing some sort of darker, more broody fruit at the moment. Um, but great length of tannin. So you're sort of shifting from a wine with great clarity and fresh, vibrant red fruit to a wine with lovely perfume and flowers but with an extra added element of precision, particularly from the tannins that are flowing all the way along the length of your tongue. Interestingly, when you shift from the 15 Magnan to the 15 LaRue, you see, yes, the Chambol characters, but the LaRue doesn't quite have the harmony and the togetherness of the Magnan. There's a real, as I said, clarity, purity, precision with the Magnans. It is just, uh, I think, a little bit of a, uh, a hallmark of the wines that I've seen from 14 and 15. So, interesting to have LaRue in the mix there. It's also got a little bit of front mid palate, sort of oak tannin kind of showing through, or slightly aggressive tannin by comparison. Not that it is actually really terribly aggressive, but just by comparison. So we've gone from a village, Moray saint denis to a village or two village, Chambon Musignes, and now we're going to have a look at the next level up in quality. So from village, you go up to Premier Cruise, and Premier Cruise, you then go up to the highest level, which is Grand Cru. Each of the vineyards being classified individually and given a status. So we've got two Premier Crews here. Now, the interesting thing is, if you have a look at the location of Sontier, it's immediately below Bommar. So Bommar is a Grand Cru vineyard. Now naturally, the closer you are in location to a Grand Cru vineyard, you'd expect the vineyard to be better. Well, this is right next door, and I think it shows. Um, so, clarity, clarity, precision, a real purity. What's the difference when we go from a shambol at a village to a premier crew? Well, interestingly, I think you see that increase in depth and length of flavour and aroma to justify the difference in price. It's definitely there. 
But the other thing that I'm really seeing is more depth of tannin, more layering of tannin. The tannin is still just as precise in that beautiful long linear tannin of Chambol, but depth of tannin. This is perhaps more tightly wound than the Villo Chambol at the moment, uh, a bit uh, showing a bit of its pedigree uh, and it's, it's brooding and waiting to explode. But lovely, lovely wine. Beautiful balance, beautiful harmony. Expressive at such a young age is, is, is quite impressive, but you can see that it's still very tightly wound and got a long way to go. So what happens when you go from 15, which has been called, hey, one of the years of the century or year of the decade or whatever it might be, to a 14, which is a very good year, but a cool year. Uh, well, with the extra year in time, we're seeing some of the secondary characters develop. Does the 14 have the same depth and length as the 15? The answer is no, it doesn't. But gee, it's a bloody good wine and it's not far off. There's a, a, a vibrancy and a freshness to it and perhaps just an extra edge of acid. The tannins and the feeling of the tannins in, in your mouth at the moment slightly rawer, funnily enough, than the 15. And it'll be interesting to see where those go over time because we'll expect those to soften just a little bit more because they're still very, very good. And what we really are seeing is just the first phase of a burgundy popping for a couple of years. And they do this. They start off just after they've been bottled, being a little bit closed, and then for a couple of years, they tend to just all of a sudden blossom a little bit. They settle down, they express themselves as young teenagers or adults, and then quite often they'll go back into a little hole again and then pop up after that, uh, often around seven to nine years. Um, so fascinating to see that this stage shows again the clarity, the precision of Stephen Magnan's wines and just the poise and elegance that they're holding. So last but not least, we move to Gevray Chambertin, uh, the most northerly, as I said, and to a village Sham Chambertin. Now, Sham Chambertin is a fantastic uh, vineyard, and one of my favourite wines is, is undoubtedly Rousseau Sham Chambertin, just a, a stunning, stunning, stunning wine. This is actually a very ripe Sham Chambertin. Um, it has got all of those characteristics of Gevray Chambertin with bigger, darker, brooding fruits, uh, broader fruit character, broader tannins, bolder tannins in it, but again, all very good quality. So you're seeing perhaps the personality of the terroir show through. I'll be very interested to see that as it evolves over the, the next few years. Um, at the moment, I think it's perhaps the most unsettled of these wines, but I would expect it to come together a little bit more. Very young Burgundies, and I guess I'm just speaking from the experience of having drunk a fairly reasonable amount of Burgundy. Just one thing to talk about quickly, uh, had this on the weekend, it's the 2007 Close Saint Denis from Stéphane Magnan, um, kindly put on by Tom and Adej. Um, Interesting to see how it had evolved. Uh, 2007, according to Tom, one of the cooler years. And boy, gee, that was looking good. It is just taking it to the next level. So you've got these phases in Burgundy's development where initially, sometimes they can come across a little bit raw, like some of these younger wines, but the Magnans, gee, they're together. Most raw is actually probably, in a way, the Larue. Um, but they then go through that first phase I was talking about where they relax a little bit, they become a little bit more expressive, um, and they show their initial younger fruits. Then they can go down into a little bit of hole and then come out of that and then start to go through another phase where a whole bunch of secondary characters come through and the mouthfeel really uh, becomes generous yet still elegant and refined. This is the intrigue of Burgundy when you get these wines and there's such lovely harmony and personality and intrigue coming from them. 
This is what draws people in. Uh, the complexity, the layering of aroma and flavour really comes in in this final phase and did with this 2007 Closer to Knee. This, uh, a fantastic wine. Um, the 2015 uh, reportedly very good too. Haven't had a chance yet to try it. The tasting budget is uh, running <laughs> a bit dry after this session. Uh, fortunately, they're under Coravin, so I'll be able to enjoy them over time with friends and uh, and members of the Wine Dakota community. But um, I hope that gives you some insight into a few of the different things around Burgundy, different villages, some of the characteristics of those different villages, different years, different classifications from village to premier cru to grand cru, and then the phases of evolution of Burgundy over the years. When you get to this level, when you get to these grand crews, when you get to a wine that's uh, that's 10 plus years old, you see wonderful things. And interestingly, we also had a 96, just a village, Nuit Saint Georges, uh, with this wine, and it was just uh, a, a demonstration of why Burgundy is so good. It had all of those. <laughs> secondary characters those layering and it was just a village wine but beautiful purity beautiful acid still such a wonderful vibrant wine um, if you've got any questions about burgundy please shout out we've got a couple of posts uh, articles in the wine bites magazine uh, helping you get your head around burgundy we call them getting your head around burgundy part one and part two so go check those out have a bit of a look if you're interested in some of the stefan magnans from uh, 2015 Shout out, um, they're going to go reasonably quickly, so we've got a short window to um, share them with you. And uh, we look forward to catching up with you for the next session uh, on Wine Decoded, where I don't know what we'll be talking about, but it'll be tasty. Cheers from Paul, thanks and bye.